as I mentioned, the first full weekend of college football action coming up in just mere days, which means it is time to discuss the following. The best conference in college football. Here we go. And you know where I stand on this. I do. All the time. I do. And it just depends now that we've seen Alabama and Georgia battle for the right to lift what used to be an egg. It's now a different trophy in the world of uh, college football playoff where the top four teams, allegedly, in the country get and make the final four. And I understand that the SEC put two teams into the championship game last year. But the SEC would fall over itself. It is so damn top-heavy. The best conference in college football plays in the Midwest and Central Pennsylvania and the East Coast. But here's the scoop. It's the Big Ten. It's the Big Ten. Even though I do know that the teams in, that play in the Big Ten on the East Coast, Rutgers and Maryland, uh, do not um, make my case. But when you look at the best teams in college football and you look top to bottom where teams will travel, teams may play in conference, and which teams are on the rise and which teams – have a chance to win their divisions, which teams have a chance to make the playoffs, which teams have a chance to win it all. When you look at the Big Ten, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan, when you look at the Big Ten with schools like Purdue and Northwestern getting better, you look at a team like Nebraska taking the head coach of UCF from the past couple of seasons going from unbeaten to undefeated and you stick him in a spot where he is lionized because he can be directly drawn back to the Tom Osborne era and having that school put Scott Frost on a sideline. When you look at that as a whole, the Big Ten is the best team. The Big Ten is the best conference in college football. You take a look at the SEC, you know, Big 12, you could throw that out there. You could throw out, despite Pac-12 football falling all over itself in last year's bowl season. You take a look at the coaches on the sidelines there. Mike, uh, we now have uh, uh, Chip Kelly at UCLA. We have our friend Herman Edwards at Arizona State. We've got Kevin Sumlin now in Arizona. You see Chris Peterson, who we had on the show, asking him about how many NFL teams knock on his door, and he gave a very interesting answer. There's a lot. You take a look at those conferences. I understand the a ACC has Clemson in it. Big Ten, top, bottom. I want to hear from you on that subject today. And I know that's kind of red meat throwing it out there to all those that listen in Southeast Conference territory. You may have the best team in Alabama you may have the best team in Georgia but you know who's not being tested outside of the SEC this year and I know I'm talking to you Brockman because you're now suddenly a Georgia fan because you're big big Georgia because your girlfriend fan big Georgia fan. how about this this weekend uh the out-of-conference schedule begins <laughs> Now, look, uh, the uh, the Big Ten, Ohio State will play TCU in a few weeks without its head coach as Urban Meyer finishes out the final game of his very lengthy three-game suspension that ends in a way this Saturday when he's allowed back in the building. I won't go down that wormhole. Michigan plays Notre Dame to start the season, which is great. That's back when I went to college at Michigan. We played, Michigan played Notre Dame, first game, right out of the box, every year until Lou Holtz started scheduling some <laughs> slippery university, yeah. some slappy university right before the warm-up for Michigan, the warm-up for Michigan game. He started doing that. <laughs> um, 
but puts it all on the line. But Alabama starts against Louisville, which doesn't have Lamar Jackson anymore. We'll see how they bounce back with former Mr. Pig Suey on the sideline. And um, Alabama versus Louisville. Auburn takes on Washington, which is without a doubt one of the biggest games of the weekend. And kudos to Auburn and Washington hooking up. LSU plays Miami. So there are some SEC teams that are putting something on the line to start. LSU, by the way, 25th overall, which is always an interesting ranking. Who's 25th overall? Why? Because whichever team is 25th overall gets flipped that ranking because of past history. (laughs) Yes. Okay? Now, you could say the fact that Michigan is ranked 14th overall is due to past history as well because last year was a dreadful season for the Wolverines. But now that I've just thrown that out there, Alabama's non-conference schedule. You ready for that this year? Let's hear it. Okay. Louisville, Arkansas State, Louisiana Lafayette, and look out for the Citadel. (laughs) Come on. Come on. I'm not saying they never put it all on the line. Last year, uh, they beat the ever-loving crap out of Florida State and kind of ended their season on the spot. Right? They they took DeAndre Francois and Out. just... It was over. They, ra- they, they treated him like a rag doll. I'm not saying the SEC doesn't have the best team within it. I'm saying they're not the best conference, top to bottom. Georgia. Georgia. Man, they're putting it all on the line against Austin P to start it all. I'll off. be there. Now, again, <laughs> if you again, see me, come look, say what's up. Look, Alabama, I'm sure the Alabama Louisville game was first scheduled 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Eight to 10, uh, probably. There, like, yeah, didn't, like didn't, that. At some, some two schools, was it Alabama and Eight. Notre Dame? I think it was. They announced that they're having some series. Oh, yeah. Alabama announced over like the week. 2028 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where there is currently right now a seventh, uh, no, hold on a minute. Let me get this right. There's currently right now a fourth grader roaming around planet Earth that's going to be the starting quarterback potentially in that game that just got announced. Yeah, home and home in uh, 2028 and 2029. Yeah, right now. Right now, my uh, seven-year-old son getting set to start second grade, actually. Coming up this uh, this week, starting it t- tomorrow, as a matter of fact. My son, Coop, potentially could be offered by Nick Saban a year before saying, hey, son, how'd you like to start for Alabama against Notre Dame? And guess you know what I would do? I'd be all about how the SEC is the best conference. <laughs> You'd pull me. But, uh, again, I understand these things are, 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 are scheduled way, way out in advance. But, sure. Come on, though. Austin P. There's no line on that game. That's, middle, middle, that's how crazy it's going to be. Middle Tennessee. This is Georgia's non con This is Georgia that played for it all last year. Massachusetts. Is that the UMass? Is that UMass? Are they playing UMass? Because UMass just really handed it to Duquesne last week. (laughs) So look out. And uh, Georgia Tech, we all know, obviously, throw out the records. Come on. Just throwing that out there. Big Ten's the best conference. I'm serious. I mean, really. Florida needs to prove itself again. Kentucky, Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Hey, Michigan took its quarterback. Arkansas, Texas A&M, LSU, Vanderbilt, Missouri, Tennessee, South Carolina. Do any of those programs that I just mentioned, other than A&M, we'll see what they can do under Jimbo. You're going to be just... Uh, is, it, is it as deep as what I've just mentioned for the Big Ten? The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.